Okay, we are in Cessary, Phil Park. Um, very north of this rail. We just came from Caldan, not a long trip as uh, you're aware with the bus. But we're going to be looking at chapter 16 of Matthew in verses 13 through 18. Verse 13, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? A lot of misunderstanding we see from verse 14. Some said, John the Baptist, some Elijah, others Jeremiah, perhaps you're one of the prophets. Now they should have known the main theme of the entire Word of God is the coming of the Messiah, the coming of the Redeemer. It starts right after the fall of man, after uh, Adam and Eve sinned. We have that uh, messianic prophecy in Genesis 3.15, and uh, it is certainly messianic. It's in a very a nebulous type of statement, but the seed of the woman, speaking of the Redeemer who would come, and God called a people coming from Ur of the Chaldees, Abram, Abraham he became, we talked about him, and told him that he would be the father of a great nation. And Abram initially had two children. He had Ishmael and Isaac, and Isaac would be the promised one. Isaac had two children. Uh, initially, he had Jacob and Esau, and Esau would not be the promised one, it would be Jacob. Jacob would have the twelve, his twelve sons, the twelve tribes of Israel. And God narrowed the promise of that ultimate Redeemer who would come, not from Simeon, not from Asher, not from Gad, not from any of the other tribes, but from the tribe of Judah. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, Genesis 49.10, until Shiloh comes, a name for the Messiah. And then we are told later on in Scripture that of all the families of Judah, it would be the family of David out of whom the Messiah would come. And prophet after prophet came, and they told of this coming Redeemer, this coming one, this Mashiach, this Messiah, our Christ, who would come. Micah 5.2, he would be born in Bethlehem. We are told in Isaiah 7, 14, he would be virgin born. In Daniel chapter 9 and verse 26, we are given uh, 24 through 26, the chronology, uh, the time of the coming of the Messiah. And without going into detail, uh, verse 26 tells us that the second uh, temple, the Herodian temple, would be destroyed, which we knew took place or know took place in 70 A.D., but Messiah would have to come before that temple was destroyed by the Romans. So Messiah had to come before 70 A.D. And so there is prophecy after prophecy after prophecy. Uh, Isaiah, uh, chapter 53, that perhaps pinnacle of all prophecies in the Tanakh, the Jewish Bible, uh, he would be wounded for our transgression. <laughs> He would be bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, with his punishment, we are healed. In verses 8, 9, and 10, we are given that great promise of uh, he would be buried in verse 8. He would be, uh, he would be killed in verse 8. He would be buried in verse 9. And then in verse 10, he would see his seed. He would prolong his days. Well, if you're buried killed and then buried and you prolong your days, what has to happen? You have to come out of the grave. And so Isaiah gave that great prophecy in chapter 53 of the, uh, of the death and the burial and the resurrection of the Messiah. And they should have known, they should have been able to identify, he is not Jeremiah, he is not John the Baptist, he is not one of the other prophets. Uh, lots of speculation about who he is. Simon Peter. Don't you love Simon Peter? Uh, just speaks his mind, sometimes well, sometimes not so well. And Simon Peter, Peter answered when Jesus said, But whom say you that I am? Do you think I'm Jeremiah? Do you think I'm one of the other prophets? Perhaps John the Baptist? Who do you think I am? 
And that is the burning question I would submit for each one of us. Who do you think Jesus is? Is he just a good man? You know, the old, uh, I'm not sure if it was Josh McDowell that uh, popularized the, the view. Uh, Lord, liar, lunatic. I mean, if he claimed to be God, and he did, if he's not God, he's a liar. If he wasn't lying and really uh, believed it, although it was not true that he was not God, he'd be crazy. He's a lunatic. But if he truly is the Messiah, the Son of God, God himself, he is Lord. And so the burning question for us, as it was back then, who do you say Jesus is? Who do you say he is? Well, we have the answer. We are told as Simon Peter impetuously piped up, didn't give any of the other time to answer, and said, Thou art the Christ, Thou art the Messiah, the Son of the living God. You are the fulfillment of all the prophecies of what Jeremiah wrote about, what Isaiah wrote about, what Micah wrote about, what Moses wrote about. You are the one that was promised to Israel, the Mashiach, the Messiah, the Christ, and you are the Son of the living God. It was back in Proverbs chapter 30. The question was asked, verse 4, Who has ascended up into heaven or descended? Who has gathered the wind in his fist? Who has established all the ends of the earth? Who has bound the waters in a garment? What is his name? Yahweh. Jehovah. God. What is his name that established all the ends of the earth? But then the question, what is his son? name. You are the Messiah, Peter said. The promised one of Israel, that Redeemer. The one who would come into the world through Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and through the tribe of Judah and the family of David and ultimately be the Redeemer. To bring back that relationship that was lost in the garden with the sin of Adam. You are that one. You are the Son of of the living God. I hope that is the testimony of every single person here. Because ultimately, when we stand before the Lord, the Lord's not going to say, how much money did you give to worthy causes? Did you give, live a good life? Did you go to synagogue? Did you go to church? The Lord's going to say, who do you think Jesus is? Who is Jesus? And what did you do with him? Peter had the correct answer. Thou art the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Then Jesus responded. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. This is something spiritually understood. And one way that God has revealed that truth to us is through His Word. We've just gone through the promises of the Messiah briefly. From Genesis 3.15 and Genesis 12, the call of Abraham, and through Isaac and Jacob and the tribe of Judah, the family of David, born in Bethlehem, born of a virgin, coming before 70 A.D. God has revealed the Messiah to us. And God wants to reveal him to your heart also. Peter understood. Peter had the correct answer. Then Jesus said this, And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will, not, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. I think it was Keith who mentioned that Jesus is uh, the master of illustration, unquestionably. So many illustrations used throughout this land. Uh, we are in the area of, of today called the Banyas, but the god of Pan was very prominent in ancient times there. A lot of idolatry here. 
and you can't see it because uh, we'll go up there because of the foliage of the trees, but there's a lot of occultic sacrifice that was done in this area. And there's an opening in that rock up there that's understood to be the gates of hell. And they would sacrifice young virgins at the gates of hell. Maybe say if you listen close enough, you'll hear the screams as you ringing down. Now it's filled up with refuse and rocks and dirt and so on. But I wonder, did Jesus pick up a small stone? Thou art Peter, a small stone, the Greek word. And there's this huge rock. But upon this rock, and maybe he pointed there and pointed to himself, I don't know. But upon me, not upon this small stone, Peter, will I build my church. And the gates of hell, all the demons and all, Satan himself cannot prevent what I'm going to build. And it's very possible he used this type of illustration and can hear because of where we are. Thou art Peter. It's not you that I will build my church. I am the rock. One of the very common teachings in the Old Testament, God is the rock. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Jesus says that he is the foundation. We are, Ephesians and Peter says, parts of the building that he is building. We are living stones, but he is the rock upon which the church was built. The church is called out one. Ecclesia. Not a building of brick and mortar. It's you and me. It's people who have understood who Jesus is. Thou art the Messiah, the Redeemer, the Promised One. You are very God yourself, the Son of the living God. And when you put your trust in Him for forgiveness of sin, you are part of His body, His building. And the gates of hell won't prevail against what he is doing. That's the gates of hell up there. So I ask you, who do you say Jesus is? Is your testimony the same as Peter? You're the Messiah. And all that that means. You're the, you're the promised one from Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and, and Judah and David that would come virgin born, sinless, the perfect Lamb of God to die for the sins of the world and resurrect for the payment of all of our sins. That's, all of that is encompassed in Messiah and His work. Can you, will you, do you say with Peter, Thou art the Messiah, you redeem me. If you trust in Him, you're the Son of the living God, your very God Himself. Who do you say He is? The most important question you'll ever have to ask.